Hello and welcome back and it's just a short video today where I want to talk about a few of the recent updates that we've heard on the new Synology DVA1622, I Hate Seagulls. Yes, that's right, this was a system that was first kind of shown off to us at the Synology 2022 event at the beginning of December 2021. Now, Although we still don't know all the information about this two-bay surveillance NAS, we have learned more in the interim, and I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, to release is looking a little closer. This is a very uniquely architectured system, and although Synology has a huge range of supported services, and indeed uh, the uh, innovations within Surveillance Station 9 have really been coming thick and fast, fast recently, particularly with the beta, it has to be said that when it comes to the hardware that is dedicated to surveillance, things aren't quite as straightforward, and they're certain, certain, certainly not as easy to read. By that, what I mean is, Every single Synology NAS has Surveillance Station inside. A lot of people, it's one of the primary reasons they buy a Synology NAS, because of that great software for surveillance, setting up with a bunch of IP cameras dotted around their home or business environment in order to protect their assets and keep an eye on things. Now, the thing is, Synology is, has this software that's so good, there are dedicated surveillance systems in their portfolio that are, you know, centered around this MVR concept. Now, the problem lies in that in their portfolio, they have two different ends. They have the budget end, which has things like the MVR1218 and the VH360HD, which are much more affordable value series um, surveillance systems that are dedicated to the surveillance station platform there. They have HDMI out, they support KVM, keyboard, video, mouse, but they're much more modest. They have a bunch of extra camera licenses inside, but ultimately they are much more affordable at this end of the spectrum. They've trimmed back on a lot of the hardware. It doesn't support DSM, it's just surveillance station on its own, and it's just for that purpose. And they're quite affordable, but they're quite efficient. But at the other end of the spectrum, you have the monsters, which is the DVA 3221 and the 3 two one nine these are four bay monsters they've got uh, dedicated gpu cards inside 1080 i believe was the most recent one might be wrong there they have uh, intel quad core based cpus inside rather than the realtek arms that are in those ones that i just mentioned on top of that these systems are a lot more upgradable and expandable in their storage they have more camera licenses inside but they can also take advantage of dva deep video analysis where you have ais that are actively monitoring recorded feeds live but you can also use it on pre-recorded stuff to double check for things like bags that are left around facial recognition and most recently um uh, better line and object tracking uh, license plate uh, recognition and all these different things that an ai is able to analyze live feeds or pre-recorded footage to get more intelligent uh, reconnaissance and intelligent surveillance protection to your most secure assets now why is this all a big problem? It's not really a problem. There's just nothing in the middle. You've got the super budget value series up here. You've got the crazy expensive two and a half thousand type stuff up here. And almost nothing there in the middle of it nearly knocked over that. This is why the DBA1622 is such an intriguing device. It's a two bay that borrows a lot of things from those other two ends and brings it into this single solution. And what we know so far about this two-bay, first and foremost, the CPU, which is great to see. It is an Intel Celeron-based processor inside there, which again is going to get a mixed reaction. It's the dual-core J4025, the CPU that we have seen in the DS22 Plus and the DS420 Plus. Now, this CPU, it's it's definitely better than the ARM, ARM based stuff, and it has embedded graphics on board there. It also supports DDR4 memory. There's no mention of the memory in this. One would assume it's going to have at least four to eight gig of DDR4 there inside. Um, but this system also allows uh, HDMI out. So again, that means KVM is on the table. It's a 4K HDMI output built into this system. So again, with that, you have your standalone surveillance system, presumably, uh, although it hasn't been confirmed, there will be additional camera licenses included. It supports up to a total of 16 cameras of live simultaneous feed, depending on their own uh, picture quality and bit rate there, of course. But it also supports some of those DVA services I've mentioned, the deep video analysis, AI powered stuff. This system can support up to two active DVA tasks and actions on, uh, you know, jobs that you are, um, apply to cameras but it can either that or it can uh, utilize a single facial recognition stream now that can mean a couple of things there first and foremost it means that this system probably doesn't have 
an onboard uh, graphics card in the way that we understand it in the larger four bay DVA there. It means this system is either doing one or two things. One, at the lower end, it's doing it all with embedded graphics, which would be strange. It's not impossible, but it would mean that this system would have to be only surveillance station. It would have to be gearing all of its resources towards surveillance station in order to get that to happen. So it wouldn't be able to afford other elements of that CPU to go towards more domestic DSM services. It would have to be boot into surveillance station, much like the affordable units we've talked about there. Alternatively, it is a system that's going to take advantage of things like the Google TPU, that M2 AI supported upgrade. Now, if it does that and it has that inside or even has an onboard AI TPU component, which we've already talked about on the channel before, that would give it enough um, AI supported resources to run a couple of AI services. If I had to take a guess, I would err that they've gone for an onboard TPU, but we'll see. Um, but really, that's kind of all we know about this system. I know this isn't a vast amount of add-on to my previous video. We know that it supports uh, an expansion device there. We know, for example, with the KVM, it's going to have USB ports on it and stuff. And we know that the two-bay chassis there is stylized in the DS720 that's currently available. But that's really everything we know about it. Pricing-wise, it's going to be more expensive than your average two-bay. Of course, I think it will live somewhere in the four to five hundred pound mark, hopefully. But we'll have to wait and see. It all depends again on those camera licenses there and how that GPU-supported uh, AI services are being fulfilled on this system. But of course, as soon as we know more or more confirmed or official release information, I will let you know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you do want to learn more, click subscribe. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. It helps me know what I'm doing right and wrong. And take advantage of the free advice section linked in the description. It's genuinely free. We don't do anything with your email. Couldn't give a stuff about your email. There's donate buttons. Use them, ignore them. It's up to you. It might take us an extra day or so to answer your inquiries. Only me and the Eddie the Web guy. We answer as many as we can. We, I'll be honest, we might be a little bit abrupt and quick in a few sentences. We try to answer every single one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.